Hi, I'm Josh Tebow, Training Specialist for LeGrand. In this video, we're going to show you how to install the LC6001 RFLC event controller with an existing RF lighting control system. The RFLC event controller will come with the RFLC event controller itself, a CAT5 so that you can plug it into your router, and a mini USB power adapter. To install the LC6001 event controller, simply plug the CAT5 in the back of the controller and then plug it into a DHCP served router. Next, you plug the power in and the LED will light a solid red until the device has an IP address and then it will change to a solid amber. To bind the event controller to an existing RF lighting control system, simply walk up to a device that has a green LED and put it in learn mode. The LED on the back of the event controller will flash green and then you can take it out of learn mode. The event controller is now bound to the house ID. To set up the event controller using a PC, laptop, or your iPad, you'll need to enter the IP address found on the front of the event controller into a web browser. To see that address, simply press the mode button on the back until the IP address appears in the window on the front. To begin setup of an RFLC event controller, simply open a web browser and type in the IP address found on the front of the RFLC event controller into the address bar. Once inside the setup menu, the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your system parameters. You'll want to adjust the time settings first. The first thing you're going to want to do is enter the zip code for where the house is located. Type in the five digit zip code and press the check button. The system will automatically go out on the internet and check to make sure that the information is available for the zip code you entered. A pop-up will appear to tell you that it will take about five seconds for the system to check the information. Go ahead and click OK to continue. If the zip code information is available, the background will turn green. If not, the background will turn red and you'll have to manually set the clock. You can adjust the auto clock set parameters by checking yes or no for enable clock set. Make sure to select the correct time zone for where the house is located and whether or not it utilizes daylight savings time. You can also adjust the daylight savings time beginning and end and then press the set DST default values button. At the bottom, if you need to manually set the clock, you can enter the time and the date. Once complete, make sure you save your settings by clicking on the Save Settings button. After returning to the Lighting System menu, you'll notice that you can do Zone Discovery, executing an RF scan to associate all the RFLC devices in the home with the event controller. A little bit later in this training, we're going to show you a more efficient way to identify and name all of your zones. From here you can also adjust the IP settings. You can leave it set for the default DHCP address it received from the router, or you can adjust it to its own static IP address. Make sure you click on the Save IP button if you've made any changes to the IP settings. Lastly, you'll see the ability to enable or disable the LCD screen timeout. Don't forget to click Save if you made any changes to these settings. After completing all of your system settings, it's time to return back to the lighting main menu and add zones. If you did not complete the RF scan previously, an error message will pop up telling you you have no zones associated and to run the RF scan. Don't worry about this, just click OK. The most efficient way to associate and name zones is to use a PC, laptop, or wireless device like your iPad connected to the Wi-Fi that supports the RFLC event controller. Simply press the raise or lower button on a dimmer, switch, or lamp module and its four digit ID number will appear once you press the refresh button in the zones menu. You can now highlight the four digit ID number and give the device a descriptive name, like kitchen ceiling for example. Simply repeat this process for every dimmer, switch, and plug module installed in the home. The next step is to set up collections, up to 10 total. Think of collections as areas, rooms, or groups of loads that you want to control all together at once. To create a collection, simply click on one of the 10 open collection locations. Type in the collection's name, in this case the kitchen, and select which loads you want to include in that collection. For example, in this collection, we're going to include both the kitchen ceiling load and the kitchen sink load. Once completed, click Save. Now I can turn on 
off, increase, or decrease the entire kitchen area from my mobile device. Once you've created all of your collections, return to the Lighting Main menu and select Scenes. Follow the same steps to create scenes just like you did for collections. Click on one of the ten Open Scene locations. Give it a name. Select which devices you want to include in the scene. Set the level you want the load to turn on to. Turning a load on to zero is like turning it off. Lastly, click Save to save your scene. The last step in setting up any event controller is to schedule some events. Return to the main lighting menu and click on the Events option. Like Collections and Scenes, simply click on one of the open event locations, up to 20, and name the event. Next, define the event. Choose when you want the event to start, whether you want it to run at a specific time, before or after sunrise, before or after sunset. You can even adjust the dwell on sunrise and sunset to allow the event to trigger a certain number of minutes before or after sunrise sunset. Next, you can select the frequency with which you want this event to operate. You can have it operate once, every day, every weekday, etc. Lastly, you'll select the actions that you want this event to perform. You can use the drop down arrows to select up to two scenes to be recalled when the event is triggered. Don't forget to click Save to save your event.